Have you been slashing your calories lower and lower, training harder and harder, only to see your weight increase? Are you worried your previous dieting efforts have damaged your metabolism? Metabolism? Are you ready to give up because you feel like nothing is going to work, you've tried everything, and just end up working harder to go backwards? You're not alone in your frustration. It sucks to feel like you're working super hard not to see the results you deserve. But the good part is your metabolism isn't broken. The bad part is everything you've done in the past, all those quick fixes and restrictive diets and marathon gym sessions are now sabotaging your results. I know it can feel like if we just look at a cookie, sometimes we gain weight. But the metabolic adaptations you're now suffering from aren't permanent. And as much as it feels like nothing will work, you can make some small changes that will truly help you lose the weight. But you've got to embrace the hard but simple truth. Change requires change. You're going to need to flip your thinking on how you approach your diet and exercise routine if you want to get the leanest, strongest body as you get older. You're going to have to go against what you've always done. Because our body simply wants to fight the weight loss process. This is because our body sees a calorie deficit as a threat to survival. And this is why we see our metabolic rate decrease as we cut our calories lower, or we try to train longer and harder and even give ourselves less recovery time. Our body does its best to function and survive based on what we're giving it. This means burning fewer calories at rest to conserve energy. It may mean we see decreases in our performance or even want to move and fidget less. It's even why we can lose more muscle mass during more extreme diets because our body will utilize what it can for fuel. And muscle's metabolically costly. This is why it's so essential we focus on keeping on our lean muscle mass. It helps us burn more calories even at rest. But when your body feels threatened and worries you won't have enough fuel, it's going to catabolize your muscles so you aren't expending as much energy. All this can make you feel like your metabolism is broken. It can lead to you gaining weight as you do more and eat less. But your metabolism isn't broken. It's just adapted. So stop doing more. Here are four tips to help you improve your metabolic health and stop the weight gain frustration as well as where to start today. The first thing we've got to do is avoid those fat burners. Trust me, if there's a magic fat burning food or supplement that worked, I'd be sharing it with you right now. But there isn't. And not only is there no magic food or supplement, but most fat burning supplements on the market are dangerous. I will personally never ever use one and I'll never recommend them for clients. And even those fat burning foods and supplements that do work initially will hit a point of diminishing returns. Take for instance, anything with caffeine. While it can potentially have an impact on our metabolism to start, and studies have even shown an elevation in fat burning and fat oxidation in leaner individuals, more so than obese individuals, our body adapts and adapts very quickly. Basically, we build up a tolerance to caffeine. So unless you keep guzzling down more and more, you won't see the same benefits you did initially. Not to mention, as we get older, the impact actually seems to decrease as well. And often, the more you start to rely on these things, the more you sabotage your recovery, which can lead to hormonal imbalances that end up holding you back. We often even become dependent on these things to maintain our current weight and our energy levels. And often, our sleep ultimately suffers, which can be detrimental to our metabolic health. So stop searching for a fat-burning food to improve your metabolic health. Instead, focus on whole natural foods and a balanced diet high in protein with a diversity of foods included. This can help you promote optimal hormone levels and metabolic health. Plus, the thermic effect of protein can actually boost your metabolic rate because your body requires more energy to utilize and digest it. Same goes for more quality whole natural foods. They have a higher thermic effect than more processed, less nutrient-dense foods. So the best way to boost your metabolic rate from foods is to actually dial in your macros and micronutrients. Tracking can be a great way to not only make sure that we're actually dialing in our macros, but also our micronutrients to include a diversity of foods to improve our metabolic health. It can help us make sure we're getting plenty of vitamins and minerals, which will ultimately lead to the healthiest metabolism. Focus on making sure your levels of magnesium, calcium, vitamin D and B complex, and even iron, especially if you're a woman going through menopause, are optimal, and that will help improve your metabolic health. Including foods high in these vitamins and minerals or even an occasional supplement is the best fat burner you can actually get. We also need to avoid those extreme deficits and longer extended deficits. Our body fights the weight loss process. It also really doesn't like change. Our body wants to maintain balance and what it believes to be normal or safe. 
which is generally where you've been maintaining for a while. So if you dramatically cut your calories while also trying to train longer and harder, your body is going to feel threatened and do what it can to conserve energy. It doesn't know when the next meal is coming, so it's going to do what it can to protect itself. Like everything, we get good at and adapt to what we consistently do. Consistently eat very little, and your body gets good at functioning off of less. To avoid creating quick and extreme metabolic adaptations so your body gets used to surviving off of a lower calorie intake, don't slash your calories super low. Instead, start by creating just a calorie deficit of 100 to 200 calories per day. And at times, give yourself a dieting break, especially if you've been in a deficit for longer or you're within 10 pounds of your ultimate goal. This diet break may be one day a week of higher calories, or it may be a 10 to 14 day stretch even of eating at maintenance. Especially if your calories have been super low currently, it may be even more key that you give your body this break. I know the idea of increasing your calories can be super scary, especially when you're already gaining weight eating so little. But eating more can help increase your metabolic rate. It can help you gain muscle to burn more calories at rest, and can help restore proper hormone function. You might even find that you sleep better when you eat more, you want to move more, you'll even see your performance in the gym increase and improve. All of these things are what ultimately lead to better fat loss results and your ability to have a healthy metabolic rate to even better maintain your results long term. In the gym, it's also really key that while we're challenging ourselves, we're not seeing every workout as a chance to slaughter ourselves. The simple fact of the matter is, if it challenges you, it will change you. Whether you use loads, tempos, volume, instability, or you adjust so many other training variables, results happen because we've challenged our body to adapt and grow stronger. However, challenging yourself doesn't mean causing yourself to feel like death after every workout. You don't have to lay in a puddle on the ground feeling like you're gonna vomit to see results. It also doesn't mean that you have to be sore for days on end if you wanna gain muscle. Too often destroying ourselves with each and every session, doing wasted volume and constantly including new moves that make us sore, actually it leads to us not seeing the results we want while working really, really hard. Challenging yourself is about creating clear and consistent progression. It's about creating a clear weekly workout schedule that you repeat for weeks so you can see that consistent growth and really challenge yourself each and every week with moves. It's about doing one more rep, about adding a little bit more weight, about increasing that range of motion or feeling the muscles working just a little bit harder. All of those things are consistent growth and progression. Even feeling muscles better engaged in a movement as you increase the range of motion can be the challenge that you needed. But challenging yourself in a productive way means having that clear plan in place to make those incremental adjustments and see growth. Stop just focusing on feeling worked and really track your progress over the weeks. Really focus on challenging yourself and seeing those improvements based on what you've tracked. That's the best way to really make sure that you're actually pushing to your full potential and really challenging yourself to create that change. And then it's key, as hard as it is, to really focus on that sleep. Sleep is so important, and I know we all know this, and I know it's the most challenging thing to actually control. Because you can't simply tell yourself, hey, I need to sleep more, right? And most of us really do see the importance of sleep. But because it's harder to change and control, we often don't focus on it. We acknowledge the importance, but we never really do anything to actually try and change it. We simply feel like we don't have the time to sleep more or we can't fall asleep or stay asleep. And while yes, you can't force yourself to sleep and it's really easy to potentially change your workouts or actually adjust your diet, you have to focus on the ways you can change habits to improve your quality of sleep and get in that routine and groove. Often the first thing we need to start with if we want to change our sleeping patterns is to note our current habits and routines that aren't leading to results. Are you consuming caffeine later in the day? Do you actually have a pre-bed routine? Are you doing your workout right before bed? Are you giving yourself time to actually unwind and relax before you go to sleep? Note the habits that you're currently doing to make little swaps and create that set pre-bed routine. Often having this set pre-bed routine can help us mentally relax and be prepared for sleep. It makes that connection in our head so we're ready and relaxed before bed versus our body and mind not really knowing that it's time to go to bed. I personally love including a little mobility work right before bed to even do some deep breathing and allow my body and mind to unwind before sleep. I also take my immunity for the zinc and magnesium sleep benefits. But more even than what the habits actually are, it's the fact that you know you're doing these things to help yourself relax to go to sleep. It simply puts you in that relaxed state of mind. Now knowing these four key tips to help you improve your metabolic health, what can you actually start today? It's key to remember that the most sustainable lifestyle changes are actually based off our current habits and routines. We need to meet ourselves where we're at currently if we actually want to create sustainable changes. 
And one of the hardest but most essential first changes to make if we do feel like we need to fix our metabolism is to eat more. But embracing eating more to lose fat can be really, really challenging when we're gaining weight eating less, especially when we've always been told the importance of a calorie deficit. We've been told we need to eat less to lose weight. That's why I want you to check out my Eat More to Lose Fat video next. These tips will help you start fueling to increase your metabolic rate and ultimately lose fat faster. If you liked the video, make sure to like it, comment below if you have any questions, and subscribe, we're posting new videos each week.